Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Pyathlon. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can incorporate collision detection into your Python game using the Pygame library. So, before we start, you need to know that there is no simple function you can use to do this, and so you're going to have to apply some logic and manually implement this collision detection. And in our game, there's going to be three types of collisions that can happen. So here I have the image editor and I'm just going to be showing you the types of collisions that can happen between our zombie and our character. Remember, once a collision occurs, that's when we'll end our game. So the first type is when the zombie is above the character and they collide. The second type is a head-on collision. And then there's also when the zombie is below the character and there's a collision. So let's back up and talk about each of these cases. So the first type, when the zombie is above the character, we're going to think about each point on the zombie as a pair of x, y coordinates. So let's look at the bottom right of our zombie. You can see that the x value of the bottom right of the zombie is greater than the x value of the top left of our character. And so that's how we're going to incorporate this into our game. You can also see that the y value for the bottom right of our zombie is between the top and bottom of our character. When we're talking about the y axis, it doesn't matter. Uh, about the x-axis. We're just going to look at these axes one at a time. And that's how we're going to incorporate this into our game. And when there's a head-on collision, you can see the same thing, except if it's perfectly head-on, then the x value, I'm sorry, the y value for the top right of our zombie will be equal to the top of our character. And then if there's a collision where the character is above our zombie, then we'll look at the top right value of our zombie, and we'll do that same analysis, uh, but just for the top right as opposed to the bottom right of our zombie. So those are the scenarios we'll be programming into our game today. So let's dive into Python and see how we're gonna do it. So I'll open up my editor. This is the code we've created in this course up until this point. So if you don't have any of this code, then you can feel free to go back and watch the earlier videos. But let's dive right in. So we're gonna add some variables here. So we'll need the size of our characters. So we'll have the width of our character, which is 60, and we'll add the width of the zombie, which is also 60. And once again, you can get the background, the character, and the zombie on pyathlon.com. And so you can look at the link the link in the description and we'll show you where you can get all these assets. And we also need the height of the character, which is 91, and the height of the zombie, which is also 91. Now you could use one variable to store the width and one variable to store the height, but if you want to change your game and affect the height or width of any of your zombies or characters, then you can just change these numbers to whatever you want and then you'll still be able to follow along without having to change much of your code. So that's, that's why we're doing it this way. All right, so we need a function that's going to tell us whether or not a collision has occurred. So we'll just say collision has occurred. This function will return a Boolean value, true if a collision has occurred, and false if a collision hasn't occurred. And so we're just going to program our base case in right now and return false, because most of the time a collision will not be uh, occurring. And so let's add in our logic to see when does a collision occur. But before we do that, we're going to break, really break this out step by step so you can follow along and see what, what's really going on behind the scenes of a collision detection. So remember when I was explaining this earlier, we looked at the top right of our zombie and compared that to the position of our character. Then we did the same thing with the bottom right of our zombie. So we actually need to figure out what are those coordinates. So let's figure out, I'll add some space here. Oof, don't know why that came up. But we will add some space here, and we're going to declare a variable called zombie top right. And remember, each position of the zombie is an xy coordinate, so we'll need a variable to store the x, and we'll need a variable to store the y. So we'll just store the x here, and that will be the, the x position of our zombie plus the width of the zombie. Remember, in Pygame, the top left is the, the origin, so the origin of our zombie is the top left. So if you want to get the top right, we need to add the width of our zombie in order to get the top right x value. And then if we do the zombie top right y, this will just be the y position of our zombie. 
and we don't need to add anything here because remember the when we're looking at the top of our zombie the y value is the same both for the top right or top left of our zombie only the x position will change and since we're only looking at it with regards to the y position we can just set the top right y value equal to the y position of our zombie and we're just going to repeat this analysis for the bottom right of our zombie now so we have bottom right x which is the zombie x position plus the width of zombie and zombie bottom right y which is the y position of our zombie minus the height of the zombie remember the origin is zero zero so when you go down on the screen the your y value will be becoming more negative which is why we have to subtract here so subtract height of zombie and we need to do the same thing we need to look at the top left and bottom left of our character so we can determine whether or not we have a collision in the step after this. So it's the same logic for the character in the zombie. We'll find the top left and we'll find the x value of it, which would just be x, which is the x position of our character. And we have the character top left y, which would be the y position of our character because we're looking at the top. Now when we're looking at the bottom, Character bottom left, we'll get the x of that, which was once again this x. And character, I spelled character wrong. Character bottom left y, which will be y minus the height of the character. Alright, so now that we actually have our points declared in variables, that step could be unnecessary. You could just directly uh, put in the equations into your if statement which we're about to create but I find that doing it this way makes it a lot easier to visualize and see what part of your character is intersecting with what and I think it just makes the whole process simpler all right so now let's actually implement the logic that we talked about when I had my image editor open so if the zombie if the bottom right and the x value of that is greater than or equal to the top left of our character and you know you have to compare x values I mean x to x and y to y and so we need to make sure the, the zombie is actually between the top and bottom of our character so we need to compare the zombie bottom right y and if that's less than or equal to the character top left y and once again, we need to see if zombie bottom right y is greater than or equal to character bottom left y. So if you're struggling to follow along with the logic, you should rewind the video and go back to what I was showing you with the image editor. We have to make sure our zombie is to the right of our character and between the top and bottom of our character. And so we just implemented the case where our zombie is above our character and they collide and now we need to implement the case where the zombie is below our character and they collide but first remember we're going to return true if there's a collision so if all of those cases are true we can return true and we know there's some type of collision and now we can just copy and paste this because we don't need to change a whole lot to implement our second case where which is the collision where our zombie is below our character so, except instead of looking at the bottom right of the zombie, we're going to look at the top right of the zombie. So change all of these zombie bottom rights to zombie top right. Make sure you get your variable names right. Change that last one also. And here we're comparing the zombie top right x. And we're going to keep comparing that to the top left of the character. And we're looking at the zombie top right we want to compare that to the top left of our character also. And then for this last one, we can also leave that alone. All we had to do was change this to the top because we weren't going to compare the top of our zombie to the same things that we just compared the bottom of our zombie to. And if we have a head-on collision, then because we're using greater than or equals to, this will still work fine. So, the last thing we need to do 
is actually check to see if there is a collision. So once we add our character, which is down here, we'll just say if collision has occurred, and we'll just set dead equals to true. Alright, so hopefully I don't have any typos or syntax errors, and if you hit run, once again, it might take a second or two to load up. It shouldn't be long. And you can see we had a collision, and then that was set to true, and our game exited. So let's actually play this game for a couple of seconds and dodge some zombies just to make sure everything's working right, and then have a collision. And then we'll know everything's working fine. So you can see when we dodge the zombies, nothing happens. And let's have a collision now. When we collide with our zombie, the game ends. So everything's working as expected. Alright, so thanks for watching. Once again, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. And I will see you again next week for the next video in this series. So thanks for watching. Be sure to visit pyapalon.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. And see you in the next video.